So it's that time of year again when we speak to people about the year in telly. Uh, I'm Luke, editor and runner of the website, thecustardtv.com. And earlier this week, I spoke to Emma Bullimore from the TV Times and TV Satellite Week about her year in television. She's had a busy one. We talk about our favourite shows, our biggest disappointments, and for some reason, our favourite people named Tom. I'm I'm not even sure why. Uh, have a listen. Enjoy. It's the Custom TV Podcast. You're listening about Sherlock series four, episode one. Uh, well, I'm right? actually trying to write about episode two because we have to write so far ahead. Um, and uh, yeah, trying not to give anything away, which is impossible when it's also exciting that you want to talk about it. Uh, yeah, but it's good. I love Sherlock. Well, we had differing views about three. You loved three, and I thought it was really self indulgent. Um, yeah, I've heard this. I've we see. About stuff. As you know, my favourite thing in the entire world is bromance. And yes. ser- Series 3 involves quite a lot of bromance. You know, there's yeah. the best man speech. There's yeah. the, um, you know, going out in the stag do, uh, or being asked to be best man. And I just love it all. You know, I don't actually like it when Sherlock goes too dark. I quite like some of the light stuff. So for me, it was good. You can't spoil it anyway. You probably still into a million bits of paper that... They're probably trained on your house now with a sniper. I think there's rifle. a sniper, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the light flashing. But no, I think, honestly, the, the first episode of the new series is brilliant. I think it appeals to, to people who like the sort of detective part of it, to people who like the bromance part of it. Just there's something there's something for everyone. I think it's really, really good. What's your, been your favourite show this year, then? Or your, your favourite show to write about, I suppose? So that could be a different thing. Yeah, those are different things. I mean, my my favourite show to write about is pretty much always anything with Paul O'Grady in it because he's brilliant and fun and usually quite grumpy, but in a really hilarious way. Um, and I love meeting up with him and chatting to him. Uh, my favourite show to watch is probably, well, I mean, that's quite recent, but probably The Missing. I just thought it was absolutely extraordinary and brilliant and everything I wanted it to be. And the ending was so much better oh, than the ending stunning. to series one. I've tried it all I can. I've looked it up. I, I think it might be her appendix. She's got a fever. There's a pain in her side. You were a medic for ten years. There must be something you can do. No. No, I don't want any part of this. If you don't help her, the girl will die. Her temperature is off the charts. The pain is getting worse. Now, you can do something to help her. Adrian, call the police. Stop Christ! Call the police! Say, no! Henry! <laughs> has us admitting what we did. So, maybe people deserve to know the truth. Because of us, that, that little girl died. I'm not gonna make the same mistake again. No. I love Sophie, and you are gonna help me make her better. Adrian. Come on. Jesus, Asian, please. All you need to do is help her. The only help that girl needs is surgery. Fine, then. That's what we'll do. She needs a hospital. No! Right here. When you speak to TV people, they say, oh, people aren't watching TV linearly and they're not bothered. They watch it whenever they want to. But everybody was gripped at nine o'clock on a Wednesday, desperate to know what was happening. They were off Twitter, they were watching the TV, and that's kind of a heart back to how it used to be years ago, where people would watch it and then use social media to come on and say how wonderful they thought it was and their theories on it as well. Yeah, I, I love theorising about it. I sort of forced my flatmate to watch it, and she, for some reason, she wasn't quite as keen as me, but I was like, you can't give up because I need to test my theories on you. you, know, you have to, we have to do this together. Um, yeah, I just, I, I love all that. I love something that's interactive, that feels like an event, uh, and that really you can't second guess what's going to happen. I think that's good. Have you spoken to the Williams brothers? 
I have, yes, yes. They well, did a mid- I've got to mid-season speak to them screening. on Monday, so I wondered mm-hmm. what how they how they come across and how easy they are to speak to because I just love the missing so much, and I wondered how they come across really. They're good fun. They're really good fun. Uh, they have a lot of bounce between each other. Um, yeah, and they're brilliant. And First um, mention of bants on the podcast all year, by the way. We don't use that, but it's good. Has that been banned? A modern person on. No, it's bants. <laughs> I've never used, never used that word before. It just doesn't come up in my everyday life. I must have less bants than most people, otherwise <laughs> I would use it. It's after, you know, obviously bro- bromance is my favourite thing and bants is my <laughs> second favourite thing. So, yeah, it's very, very exciting for me, this podcast. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, what were we saying? Harry and Jack. No, ha- they have a lot of, they have bants. See, I've, I've it, overdone kind... it. I've done it for the whole year now. <laughs> it's kind of funny because, um, as with most writers, I mean, they're just very ordinary people. I feel like you could walk, not only just walk past them in the street, but meet them at a dinner party and not be aware mm. that they've just written this series that's had millions and millions of people absolutely gripped. Um, they're very sort of just down to earth. They're great and um, very talented. I'm speaking to them on Monday, so fingers crossed it goes well because that's always my nervousness that it won't go well. But yeah, why are you nervous? You'll be fine. I don't know because it's that awful thing. You speak to people every day that it doesn't matter if they don't like you. But I want people I like to like me. There's nothing. They will worse like than you. That. They will like yeah, you. Well, but Benedict Cumberbatch is your best friend, so it's going to be. I fine. won't open with that though because they might feel intimidated. They might do, yeah, that's it. Plus, that's as it, that yeah. was nearly two and a half years ago, I'm not sure how much longer I can hang on to that. Hey, but, friendship's yeah. for life. Do you not listen to the Spice Girls? <laughs> Friendship never ends. Come on. Does it not? Does it not? Well, how come he never calls? Is all I'd say to that. It's just, it's one of, you know, the, that thing that comes up on Facebook all the time, you know, these, these stupid little messages where it's like, uh, a friend is someone who you cannot talk to for years and then just pick up with and it's exactly the same. I feel you know, I feel it's just that you haven't seen each other. I think if you saw each other again, he would embrace you in a very special way. I'd like to say it's our schedules, but it's definitely his schedule more than mine. Yeah, he's kind of busy at the moment. Yeah. I, let's I'm give him free that. free at 5.15 on a Friday. I bet he's not. <laughs> Do you know what? I heard that 5.15 is his quiet time. It's just oh, that I've hogged we'll, you. We'll, That's the problem. We'll, we'll add him in to the call <laughs> right now. Oh, Benny C, as I call him. Um, <laughs> yeah, that might be where the friendship is falling apart. I think Benny C is not a name he likes to go by. Because you've done a lot of screening uh, interviews and stuff as well. What have been your favourites of those and highlights from those? Because that's always fascinating because you've seen the show before and then you have to sit in front of an audience and chat to the people and it must be a, a, a weird but interesting thing to do, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's really good fun. I, we did the um, Casualty 30th anniversary one. I mean, I know Casualty gets some flack and it, it does have some ropey bits in it, but... You know, it's an incredible achievement to reach 30 years. And it was actually quite emotional, like the current cast and, and people that have been there for a long time. We had, it, was, it was in Cardiff and it was a beautiful screening. I had the, the Philharmonic Orchestra there doing it. And that was amazing. Wow. And then it's just interesting, journalistically, if you do something like Our Girl with Michelle Keegan. And obviously, Michelle Keegan is a brilliant actress, but she's also now kind of fodder for celebrity magazines so it's interesting looking out at a room knowing you've got to field questions and thinking please no one ask anything totally stupid you know don't and then ask you've about got to be the person to say don't ask the questions about mark wright and don't because you're there for our girl she's there for our girl it must be awkward that, well yeah it can be and you know my job is to sort of say don't worry I'll look after you and then I think oh god I don't want to look bad either so uh, yeah so, um, so it, but it's it's really fun I enjoy doing them and it's nice when you've when you've watched it on your laptop in preparation with one eye on the screen and with one eye thinking what am I going to ask it's then yeah. really nice seeing it in a big screening room and just enjoying it and hearing the reaction and hearing lo- other people laugh where it's supposed to be funny and gasp where it's supposed to be shocking whereas obviously you don't really do that when you're sitting in an office you know what what did you think of our girl in the end because i i thought it was good but i struggled a lot with the relationship element to it just because i didn't really believe the relationship aspect of our girl and it seemed a bit 
pandering to sort of a teenage audience rather than an adult audience, which didn't sort of gel with the sort of harder elements of it. Do you think I just overanalyzed it, or do you think it was a bit uneven? I know what you mean. I feel like, in a way, when BBC Three was on TV, it sort of maybe was more for BBC Three uh, mm. in its audience. Um, but I just think it's fun. Like, there's so much that is so serious and so dark. I, I sort of forgave it for being a bit light. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like that's it. I, I kind of quite appreciated that, and it was. I, I found it very didn't easy know to why watch. He was called Elvis. I just was hoping for an Elvis. <laughs> person. That was all it was. I kept thinking he's going to break into Jailhouse Rock at some point. That's bound to happen. It never he's... did, and I felt a bit let down. He's very pretty, Luke, Luke Pasqualino, isn't he? Very pretty. Oh, yeah, it goes with the name, I think. You know, it's not... not Pasqualino. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. he's the second most attractive Luke in the media industry. But, you know, I'm yeah. just saying, I think he is quite easy on the eye. However, everyone knows that I'm... If we're, if we're looking at Musketeers, I'm all about Tom Burke. However, I'm just saying, I think he's quite obviously good-looking, Luke Pasqualino. What I didn't like this year uh, was um, Britain's Got Talent, the, the winner... Ooh. I just didn't really understand. He wasn't a very good magician. And yet he seemed to have all this military shtick going on, which I felt was just irrelevant. Mm. And it mm. was just it was just a way for people to vote for a serviceman to win it, which is fine. Like, be, support the military, that's great. But it, it doesn't mean that he's a brilliant magician. I didn't really understand that. I, I think, as an answer to that, when you said I didn't like the Britain's Got a Talent winner, I was panicking going, who even won it this year? I couldn't remember. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, good, good, mem- not entirely memorable as I didn't remember him. But yeah, I, I, I get your point. But who came second and third? I don't even, I'm not even sure. So I can't remember. Ju- Saying uh, that, I do think like- this year, this year, I'm a Celebrity is the best series we've had in a really, really long time. So, you know, Ant and Deck and ITV, this is not personal. It's just, oh, it's just that I didn't no, enjoy they are, talent. they are brilliant. In fact, if I, even if I didn't like I'm a Celebrity, which I do, I really one of the highlights of my year i think ant and deck do some of their best work on that because they're really enjoying it they're really relaxed and i love it, them it seems it seems like they come they just love being there and the crew laughter all the time that's genuine isn't it nice to finally see a shower scene yeah huh? yeah. 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 Whoa, whoa, yeah whoa whoa steady on hmm? That was on the verge of sounding very, very sexist. No, very no, sexist. hold on. It doesn't have to be a shower scene with a, a woman. It could be with a man. Could be with a man, for right, instance. Right, that's better. Like Larry. Could be Larry. Or one of the other celebs, like Larry. Or, you know, any of the other Larrys. Lads, I mean, lads. 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 Yeah. Anybody, anybody, if it was Larry, I'd be as happy as Larry. Right. <laughs> they didn't lose enough weight for me, though, this year. <laughs> well, Scarlett had lost all of her weight before she'd gone in there. So, I know. You know, I'm one of those terrible people that usually enjoys them arguing. So I What's kind of thought, I? you know, I thought, oh, this is going to be so bland. But it actually wasn't. I, it was actually really nice, them all going, getting on together. I don't think you could always have that, but just as a refreshing change. I think also this came at a time when everyone was really upset about Trump and we were like, right, okay, we're going to throw ourselves into this. And it was just a nice place to be, sort of in your head so uh, yeah I think, I think we all just responded to that this year I don't think reality TV in general celebrates the nice person enough and I suppose that celebrated a lot of nice people really didn't it at the, at the same time absolutely than... which is exactly why Bake Off is successful and exactly why Strip is successful because actually they're just, they're just nice how, how do you feel about that going to Channel 4, that seems... I can't see that as the lead into Grand Designs or or, just, <laughs> or, or no offence. I don't know, it just doesn't seem to... to it's very to un-Channel 4. It's very yeah. un-Channel 4. I think it's a shame. I think it's a massive shame because at the beginning of this year, we all just thought, oh yeah, Bake Off's a show that will run for at least another five years. And now it's over already because even when it goes to Channel 4, it'll be very different. You know, Mary won't be there, Mel and Sue won't be there. And... Th- you know, what do people think of when they think of the Bake Off? A lot of it is the tone of it, and they think of the innuendos yeah. and the way it's presented. That's all Mel and Sue's choices. That's not a format. Yeah. That That's their presenting style. So it's going to be very, very different. Bakers, two hours left. It's two hours. Are you doing me out of a job, mate? This is this is all I had. Sorry. It was like the speaking clock, but with puns. That's all we had. Do you want, do you want us to yeah. come and bake for you? Is that what you want? Well, Jesse? No, no, what a quarter I'm... turn, what a book turn, mate. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. It's over. 
I'm absolutely furious. I'm furious sorry. with you. I just think it's a mess, and and it, and it's a sort of indicative of greed and just selling to the highest bidder, which they say they didn't do. They say it wasn't the highest bidder; it was the best package or whatever. But 